Secrets to success with music NFT is a very popular topic today, and like we discussed, it is just in its beginning. We have Shaw, Dylan Rhodes, and Arthur Marcus Bacom. Come on up. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey. Good. Let's talk about music, rap, NFTs. So, uh, thank you so much. I'm here today with Shah and Dil, amazing rappers that are building a fantastic career uh, inside of the Web3 space. Uh, they have some, some songs released with NFTs. So, uh, I'm Arthur, but first of all, I want to know a little bit more about you guys. Uh, who here is artists? Have some artists here? Awesome. And NFT collectors? Good, amazing. So uh, to start this conversation, uh, I want to uh, know more about you guys. So please, uh, I, I want to know more about you. Present your, yourselves, please. Bill, you wanna, you wanna kick it off? I don't think sure. it's on, but I don't know if you can What's up, everybody? How's it going? I'm Dill, and I've been doing music for almost a decade. I'm a multi-platinum recording artist from Philly, and I started out making music on my laptop, and that took me on SoundCloud to working with some of the biggest labels in the world, and quickly seeing how these labels operate with artists, which is very predatory deals, ripping off artists, so I had that experience of a label taking my multi-platinum hit and taking all of the money and never reinvesting in me. So that's what led me down the road of being an independent artist. I've been an independent artist with my own label for probably seven, eight years now. Been in crypto since 2016, originally as a crypto investor, and I've helped to build out this community with music NFTs for over two years now. So I was one of the early artists to mint in March 2021. So we recently passed two years on the blockchain. I've changed my life because of Web3 and you know, originally starting with crypto and then ultimately helping to build out music NFTs. It's allowed me to monetize my music to the point where in the last two years, I have made more from Web3 than I did with a multi-platinum hit. It's called Jordan Belford. It's a song about the Wolf of Wall Street. Some people may know it. So I've made more because of NFTs and Web3 than a multi-platinum song, and that's because of ownership. So I made an album called Crypto Rich as well, which was the first album to tell a story about crypto through music, published in 2019. And ever since then, I've been trying to figure out how can we sell music for crypto. So ultimately, that brought me to NFTs, and I've helped work with and launch some artists that you may know, Violetta Zeroni, um, Sammy Ariaga. These are some of my close friends, um, you know, Spotty Wi-Fi, uh, Ray Isla. Um, just a lot of great people in the space, so just happy to be involved. And I'm also a, a dev and uh, have a huge platform for marketing NFTs and helping artists sell and create their projects. So that's what we do. That's amazing. Congrats, Dil. So, Sha, please go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, that's an inspiring come up, inspiring story. I'm, I'm Sha. Before I get into it, we have an NFT celebrity in the audience. I see Andrew Schiffman right over here, so everyone don't be shy afterwards. But um, so I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum, I would say, than Dill. Like, he's like an OG in this 2016 and 2021, you minted your first NFT. So me, I'm a rapper, and my success has come from the traditional music world, um, or at least I would say like 98% of it. Now, I've been embraced by the NFT community, the music NFT community, NFT NYC, this is my second year speaking, and I love that it is a, there is an actual community. So when you go onto Twitter spaces or Discord or whatever, there's like a real sort of community. There's something bubbling there. Now, I have yet to really sort of figure that out for myself um, my team, I have a I'm an independent artist. My team is very small and 
and no one really knows shit about this space. So it's sort of me and my interest just navigating and trying to figure things out for myself and it's led to some amazing places. But overall, I'm still figuring things out as we go and I've been blessed to have some amazing experiences. But part of me not really knowing the space fully means that I've been very, I guess, cautious in releasing my first music NFT. So I remember last year, speaking at NFT NYC, everyone was shocked that, yo, how have you not released a music NFT? Like this is, especially at that point, this is just easy money, right? But one thing that I observed in the NFT space is that, you know, whenever there's easy money, whenever there's an opportunity for easy money, you see vultures come in and like I haven't fully seen that in the music NFT space, but in the NFT space overall, you see corporations jumping in, throwing out, you know, something that might not really be offering value, trying to capitalize. And I want to do something that's totally the opposite. So this is an area where I've been figuring things out on my own. I've been searching for people to come on and sort of guide me and build a team like you would in the normal music industry. And yeah, that's my that's my story up until now. Perfect. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So uh, talking a little bit about me, uh, like I'm from Brazil. I'm Arthur. Uh, my brief story is when I was younger, I wanted to be a singer, but we know that the how centralized is the, the music industry. And I decided to study aerospace engineering. So <laughs> I'm graduated in aerospace engineering. I uh, worked for a few years in the financial market. And then I decided to work with music. So I, I'm co-founder today uh, and CEO uh, of Muzi. Muzi is a, a platform, uh, a marketplace for independent artists. Uh, it's like a, a new ways for independent artists to make a living with music. So uh, in our platform, artists will be, uh, can uh, sell four categories of NFTs. The first one, just collectibles. Uh, the second one uh, is like collectibles with benefits so uh, artists can sell collectibles and give benefits to their fans, like uh, exclusive experiences. So uh, tickets for shows, access to backstage, uh, things like uh, uh, meet and greet with the, with the artists. And also uh, artists can sell exclusive products, so merchandising, signed items, and the, the last uh, category of NFTs are the royalties. So uh, artists can put uh, their songs and once the, the, the songs uh, plays on uh, streaming platforms, uh, the holders of the NFTs uh, earns together with the, with the artists. So uh, we created this platform uh, just to give to independent artists the opportunity to, to monetize their careers in different ways. So uh, let's start with some questions here to, to Shah and Dil. Uh, why you guys decided to start exploring uh, NFTs and Web3 technology? And how do you see uh, it changing the music industry in the future? Yeah, so for me, it was always about wanting to create something that would tell people what I had learned about the future for financial and creative freedom. So before there was music NFTs or really any way to sell your music for crypto, I made this album Crypto Rich because I had realized that crypto is the future of financial and creative freedom. And, you know, I have over a million monthly listeners and I wanted to create something that would help the people who believe in me to learn something that I believe about the future. So Crypto Rich is a vision, it's a story, it's a journey. You know, I've had some wins in crypto and NFTs, but I'm still an independent artist trying to connect the dots. You know, Crypto Rich is a vision, it's a story. I didn't just make it because, oh, I'm so crypto rich. Like, it's about 
telling people in a way that's gonna catch their attention, right? So Crypto Rich really is my story. And it's about me as an artist. It's not just all about the blockchain or all about crypto. I wanted to create something authentic that was inspiring, but still my story. So that's what Crypto Rich represents. And we've had great success bringing it to the blockchain. We have a mint that's live right now for 0.03. And everything that uh, Arthur just mentioned about utility, we're doing it live now. We just had a huge event last night called WebStock. It was great. We offered uh, tickets for my holders. I offered free food for my holders there. And just try to make everything really special. So I see the way that this technology can connect the community together. And for the artists, it's a new revenue stream, right? So Crypto Rich is on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube videos, everything just like a normal album would have. And I published it back in 2019. So to me, the biggest potential is when artists release music NFTs for music that's out there on Spotify that has music videos, that has real content behind it. It's not just about bringing a song and putting it on the blockchain, right? When you buy Crypto Rich, when you go mint right now for 0.03, you can pull that up on Spotify and see that it has over 2 million streams and you can show it to your friends and say, I own the NFT for this, right? That is cooler than having to pull up your OpenSea and you're in a club at NFT NYC and it's not loading up and you're like, oh, it's cool, it's music. like. That's not practical to me. So what I wanna see is music NFTs that are connected to real music that the artist is putting out there with a full marketing strategy. So that's what I've learned about the space and where I see it going. And the most successful artists that I've seen, they're connecting it to real music. They're doing custom contracts. They're adding utility, rarity. Everything that a PFP has, a music NFT can and should have. And if you find the good ones, they already do. Okay, we have a blind mint, mystery reveal, custom contract, rarity levels, utility, everything a PFP offers and more. Because we had an amazing event last night and I can think of a hundred PFP projects that didn't do a damn thing for New York. So when I think about this, I'm like, utility is natural for music. We do this. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've done over a hundred shows. I played in front of 15,000 people. Most PFP projects are saying we're gonna try for the first time to put together an event. So this is why I think music NFTs will not only change the music industry, but change the Web3 industry as we know it as well. That's already happening. I mean, you see now the amount of music events, the amount of artists, there's artists performing here, everything. So that's where we're headed. And if you get into some of these amazing collections now, it's like getting into those bored apes of the future, getting into those crypto punks. That's what's forming here in music NFTs. So that's why I say get into these collections. Don't get left behind. You know, you can go mint right now for 0.03. It's affordable. I've had pieces that have sold for over two ETH. So there's a lot of strategy behind it, marketing, sales, and growth. So look at these collections because people think music NFTs are new. And meanwhile, I have collectors who've you know, made some impressive sales, who've come to a Wu-Tang show that I opened for, uh, opened for Waka Flocka, had shows all around the country from LA to New York to London. So stop buying all these random PFPs that have no value behind them. They're just a project that someone threw together and they've never even done any of the stuff they say they're gonna do. That's what I have to say about that. agree a hundred percent with you about uh, utilities uh, mainly so Shah do you have something to add so for my journey that was the question like my journey into yeah, yeah, yeah. how I got here so, um, about the future of NFTs uh, how do you see this this market how like new opportunities for independent artists got it okay so my journey to NFTs and music NFTs came via crypto it was I got introduced to crypto made some money and then I remember I started telling my fans like hey just trying to put them up on game and I remember it just not landing it just not resonating this was maybe 2019 maybe and it was one of the first times that I really tried to put my fans on game right like okay I think that this is a pretty good at least long-term bet and I remember it, it just fell flat like those like the engagement on all those posts was just not doing anything and then I'm like all right well I guess for now this is something for me and I think I tried one more time with like with when NFTs were hot and it was like and I was 
there somewhat early. It's like, hey, there might be some money here. And again, it just fell flat. So then I, you know, mentally tuned that part out. And it's like, all right, my fans are not, don't give a fuck about this shit. They think it's a scam. People think I'm like, am I in on something, right? So then I outwardly really turned that super low as I started to build a community in Web3 in the NFT space. And obviously there I'm engaged, but there I'm still on like the learning side of things, right? I'm seeking knowledge. I'm not pushing through and getting other people money like on a large scale yet in, in that space. So that's where kind of things have been for like the last little while. The future though, I think that in entertainment in general, you're seeing like niches and micro niches and sub genres and micro genres. And I think that's gonna increase, right? So there's like this, like there's this democracy of content with, with social and with streaming where it's not really like the gatekeeper era anymore. So people can find exactly what they want, which means that music and songs are gonna get more and more tailored to a very specific audience. And then the opportunity that music entities make a little bit easier is to involve your audience, involve your fans, involve your community in your song. So breaking down the rights, breaking down royalties where they're getting a piece of it. Now there's an artist, La Russell, who's doing this real well in the real world in like traditional music. So it's not something that'll be exclusive to music NFTs, but music NFTs definitely have the lead on, on this. So that's, that's where the future is headed like in the short term and in the long term, it'll be more like, uh, I guess, opportunities to really tighten your community. So giving, you know, VIP access to your shows. I've given backstage access, not to sort of, not specifically tied to NFTs, but inspired by NFTs to my super fans, right? So sure. I think that'll continue and that's the opportunity that artists can capitalize on. And uh, when we talked about uh, NFTs uh, and Web3 space, the centralized space, uh, have you guys, uh, did you guys have some problem in, uh, in your songs or your materials uh, that people use these materials without uh, your permission, for instance, Sha, uh, you recently uh, had an adult film star releasing uh, uh, sex tape material uh, as an NFT without your consent. Can you uh, explain and tell us more about this episode? Okay. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, so there was a... Uh, Feel free if you yeah, want yeah, no, to. I'll, I'll <laughs> so there's, yeah, a porn star, and uh, and we were just hanging out, whatever, doing, you know. And then, you know, the app uh, Be Real, it's like it says you got to take a picture and post it. There's an app called Be Real. It's like a low uh, level of whatever, Instagram, is, and then when it goes off, you have like two minutes to take a picture. So we were you know, at my place and um, and then her thing goes off and she's like, oh, it's be real. Can you take a picture of me while we're, you know, doing our thing? I'm like, okay, sure. So take a picture and then get back to it. And she's like, oh, do you mind um, like filming? So it's like, okay, sure. So, so when you say it without consent, it's like, I don't want to make her seem like a bad guy because like obviously I was, like I agreed to film the thing um, so then, so then the video she put on her OnlyFans, but it, yeah, that picture, that be real, then she, uh, whatever, made an NFT, made an NFT out of it, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Any deal? Uh, had some experience like that or some some time that uh, anyone used... If you have an experience <laughs> like that. <laughs> not like that, but... <laughs> or maybe. Yeah, not not quite like that. That's quite the story. I mean, that's uh, you got something there with that story. So I don't have that experience, but what I can talk about is that 
I make music uh, that people can use within their NFTs. So when you own a Dill NFT, you can actually take that music and use it within your own NFTs or within an app or something that you're building. So yeah, I mean, we, we do a lot of different stuff. And one thing that I've been really successful with is making music that is for Web3, genuinely created for the Web3 community. So this is my song, GM. Some people may have heard it, it goes like this. GM, 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 ay. Them boys been rugged so much that I don't want to beat them. GM, 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 GM. Just slide up on my open seat and slide up on my DM. GM, 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 yeah. Wake up to my baby girl and tell that girl like GM. GM, 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 GM. I ain't worried about a hater. No, I cannot even see them. So. Woo! Amazing. GM, GM, GM. Everybody. So that song has GM. been really popular in um, Web3. And yeah. uh, it's really led to a lot of growth within the community. So for me, I'm focused on actually decentralizing the IP rights. But I don't give up my masters and my publishing. Because artists should protect that. So the future I see, artists owns their masters. Artists owns their publishing. The community is about being part of their VIP club. It's about owning a piece from the artist just like you would a traditional painter. We never had that for music. It wasn't possible. Why should 99 cents on iTunes be the price for every song no matter what? I have people who bought my album for two ETH, right? So clearly there is some kind of discrepancy in what people are willing to pay with the right utility versus what is available in Web 2. So that's what's been huge for the community. I want to see a show of hands real quick. Who has a MetaMask wallet? Who has a MetaMask wallet in here? Now, who has bought an NFT? And who has sold an NFT at a profit? See, it's a lot, a lot of hands go down for that one. See, the thing is, buy into communities that are real, that you can talk to. I'm on Twitter Spaces every single day. You can go to my website, itslit.org slash mint, and mint right now for 0.03. This NFT is going to be better than 99% of the junk that is trying to be sold to you out there. So. I'm serious. I've been here for two years. You can check the blockchain and see how our collectors have grown and you know, grown their crypto along with us. So at the end of the day, it's a product. It's a service. You can immediately connect to my Discord, join a special community. We do shows every day. We offer one-on-one -on -one chats and support for anything you might need in NFTs. And that's not to mention the shows, merch, and events that we do. Right. So this is an NFT that has a lot behind it. And just because we don't have you know, $100 million in wash trading volume on OpenSea, it doesn't mean that we're not doing amazing things and creating value for collectors. So don't just look at all these inflated numbers. There's all kinds of mischief that goes on in Web3. Look at real communities and mint yourself a Dill NFT. Right now it's .03, it's 50 bucks to get an album. It comes with 19 songs and all the utility that we mentioned. And let me tell you one last thing. The utility of coming into my spaces with over 100 people and sharing your project alone is worth buying this NFT. That's it. Amazing, Shah. Last minute. Can you share something, your handles? Yeah, if you want to find me, I'm Shah. And everywhere, Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, all that is Day of Shah. Um, I'm from Toronto. I'm in New York all week. Similar to last NFT NYC, it was a great time for me to connect with people in this space and sort of build out my team. And like I said right at the beginning, I'm very upfront about I still feel somewhat new in this space and I'm very excited to sort of grow my team. Um, when I shouted out the legend Andrew Schiffman, in the audience right here, just earlier, he had told we were on a panel, we co-hosted a panel last year, and he had told me he pulled up to a show uh, that I was booked at. Um, I was double booked, so I wasn't able to go. But you know, these music NFT shows are very, way smaller, right? So when you have someone like that show up, it really means a lot. It really means a lot, and that's very touching to me that this sort of building still is happening. Like we're still. It's such an early stage in this space that that sort of stuff is happening. Point being, if you see me after this, later today, all week I'm in town, come say what's up, come start a conversation. I'm down to build with y'all. 
and much love. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. And to finish this conversation, I would like to invite you to mint your songs on Muzi uh, and help the, the community to grow and help another, another uh, independent artists to monetize their careers and make a living with music. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Didn't that make you want to join their communities immediately? Like, really? Well done, guys. Um, we're going to continue the theme here with how to earn crypto with your music streams and featuring Lucas Meyer.